Yeah, the reviewer liked uh, the first Omen. Uh, really? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the new movie, The First Omen, today, as well as a couple other things. But let me tell you, the other day, I was laying on the ground, as I usually do. I lay on the floor and relax, and next thing I know, my floor seems to be wobbling and shaking. And I get up, and I look outside, I look around, and I'm like, what's going on? And the first thought that comes to my mind is... Here it is. Today's the day. Today's the big day. My mental breakdown has begun. I am hallucinating a earthquake or something of that nature. And now my mental descent has begun. And I decided, you know, it's only going to be a few days till I'm (laughs) making bracelets. Yeah, it's only going to be a few days till I'm coloring pictures and making bracelets in the psych ward. So let me just enjoy my final days in my apartment now. Let me hang out. And I just said... I'm just going to go with the mental breakdown, see, and see, and just, you know, go with the flow, see what's next. Maybe some penguins are going to walk in my apartment, you know, maybe Mother (laughs) Teresa will come pay me. Who knows what kind of fun things are in store. (laughs) Then I get a text from Clay, and he says, did you feel the earthquake? And I went, wow, it was real. It was Mm -hmm. real. It was an actual 4.8 earthquake in New York and New Jersey, something I have never felt before in my life. When I was laying on the ground, I felt like I was on a DJ turntable, like I was going it, 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 like that. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And apparently a lot of people felt it a lot worse than, than I did. Mo said his whole house was shaking, his windows, his bed was shaking. He couldn't be here tonight, but he would have uh, shared his story. Uh, Pastor's parents felt it. Dre felt it at his job. And the, the interesting thing is, some people would be in the same room and some would feel it and some weren't. My friend was in a, at her job and she didn't feel it at all, but she, she goes to the next room and her coworker is literally screaming her head off like if, uh, like if ISIS just walked in and started beheading somebody. She was like <laughs> screaming for bloody murder. She's like, what is going on? They're like, oh, you didn't feel the earthquake? So some people didn't even feel it in the, in the, same, in the same room. Rich, what, how did you feel about this earthquake well, unfortunately, uh, it is another earthquake that I missed. <laughs> um, I heard something. Like I'm like, what is that sound? It was I was goading the the dog to come downstairs to go out, and uh, then when I got down, my parents said, "Did you feel the earthquake?" And I'm like, "Nope." Oh, Thwarted nope. again. Yeah, because I missed one. Um, I was visiting a friend who used to live in San Francisco. Love it. And everyone was like, "Did you feel the earthquake? Was it your first earthquake?" I'm like, "I didn't feel nothing. I was outside, dang, walking the city streets and felt nothing. Damn. And I was so disappointed. You actually wanted to feel it. I, I wanted to. Yeah. I guess it was a, that one was a good shaker. You right. know. Right. Yeah. But you ended up did feeling one. You felt one in your life. Yeah, uh, at the bank. At the how was that one? <laughs> it scared the heck out of me because I didn't. At first, I didn't know what was happening because right. it's the first time I actually felt one, and my whole cubicle was like, "That's an earthquake! That's an earthquake!" Yeah. And you, you you didn't enjoy it? You had fun because you wanted to feel. Oh, it again. I did. I, I okay. thought it was great. I'm like, finally, <laughs> <laughs> the big day, the big moment. Yeah, I do not I, like the, anything the, like that. The first one I had an opportunity to feel, uh, I was in high school. And uh, it was like about 4.30 in the, in the morning. And uh, people's houses shook. It woke them up. And I was out delivering papers. I felt oh, nothing. Oh, right on the bike. You didn't fly off the bike? Well, I, I walked. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Really? You weren't on the bike like in every kid's movie when they're delivering papers? No, because no, my, uh, my route was so compact. Like all my house, it was when people used to buy the newspaper. Okay. And so it was compact in like uh, f- four blocks. Okay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Now I'm not a big fan of that stuff because then I immediately think of like disaster movies, which I hate watching. I like, only thing I like is, is, is hurricanes. I like hurricane watch, but I don't like any, any other type of disaster. I think of, I think the street's going to start cracking open and like, you know, People are going to start mm. falling into the street and then the birds are going to fly out of the sky and die. So I'm not a big fan of earthquakes. That was, um, that, I didn't really feel it that much. Like I said, it lasted for me like 
not even 10 seconds, it felt like. Yeah. It felt like five seconds of earthquake. It wasn't even that bad, but uh, like I said, other people felt it a lot worse. Well, but, I, I mean, we're fortunate that at least in you know this geologic era that right. our earthquakes don't really wreck stuff. No, not like in Taiwan yeah. where they had buildings leaning. Right. Just, it's like a week ago, things were collapsing. That's got to be rough. That's insane to see. Did you see that that image of the of the building just literally hanging? Looks like it's hanging by a thread over oh, that I didn't guy's see head. That. No, it, no. it looks like AI. I, I skipped it at first. I didn't even send it to him. I could look like AI. It was a guy just under a building, and the building was leaning over him, about to just fall on him. But it was uh-huh. hanging on by whatever beam or whatever it was hanging on. He just like staring up at it. Like a it looked like a, a poster for a disaster movie. It was oh, insane. Wow. Yeah, thank God we don't have anything like that. Imagine my, my yeah, yeah. My apartment ended up just on the ground. Just no, I, you know, I, I mean, our weather, you know, is you know sometimes winter, you know, teases us all the way up till May. But we, right. you know, as far as natural disasters at this part of the country, upstate New York, uh, we're uh, we don't we don't worry we're too much about natural disasters getting us. Well, will we have to worry about that with global warming and global boiling and all this other crap that's happening? Will we have to worry about that in the coming years? Disasters and mishaps well, and adventures? I think the biggest thing that um, probably in our, well, maybe your lifetime, yeah, um, is that New York State has a lot of water. Mm-hmm. So probably the biggest thing that uh, New York State's going to have to contend with is people coming in to take the water. Really? Yeah. Like to drink it? Well, to take it and divert it or whatever, you know, or or a mass influx of people once other parts of the country start running out of water. Oh, then they're going to come here so they can get some of ours. Yeah. And oh, and um, I mean, the one thing that I, I really appreciated that uh, Andrew Cuomo did is he put a moratorium on fracking. Right. And, uh, you know, I had written a letter to his office saying, you know, of course. New York State's got some of the best water in the country. Why are we going to wreck it with fracking? And um, perhaps maybe I was uh, part you, of a group of letters that may have convinced him. I don't know. You influenced uh, Governor Cuomo? But he, wow. you know, he did put a moratorium on it, and we do have a lot of water here. Right. No fracking. And fresh water. I mean, drinkable water. That's right. That's right. No fracking allowed. No. Well, another big event that happened in New York, which was actually today, was the solar eclipse. We haven't had one here in how long, Rich? Billions of years? No. I forgot how many years. But a full eclipse. A full eclipse? I thought thought, uh, the last one was a partial eclipse 20 years ago. We had, when's the last oh, perhaps. Time? I don't know. I okay. didn't follow it that closely. We haven't had a full eclipse since probably the dinosaurs roamed the earth in New York. It wasn't even New York at that point. And let me tell you, I, <laughs> I did not. that's a little overstated. I did not look at it. <laughs> I don't care about anything. I was literally sleeping during the same way I was sleeping during the uh, earthquake. I was sleeping during the eclipse. I look out at the window and I go, oh, it looks Looks kind of dark, and I just went on back to normal uh-huh. life. And my friends did send me some cool pictures of it. I do like looking at the pictures of it, but nothing inside of me compels me to. I'm gonna get the glasses, and I'm gonna walk outside, and then oh my god! And then you know we're, we're upstate, so this is where it was like a hot spot, right up here, like in Rochester and stuff like that. We're not in yeah. Rochester, but that's a hot spot. So then you know. I could never even imagine seeing myself going to one of the gatherings, like you know, people congregate. That's what's happening, right? People congregate at like a hot spot to go look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I can never imagine that. Everybody, it's probably just people, just just people smell probably because a lot of like hippies probably go there. They don't wash their underarms, <laughs> oh, God, so they on. go there and it's like I it's, mean, it's, it's outside. Who cares? It's, it's because you because you're compact and it probably smells, and then you have people all uh, around I, you. I think that you're letting your imagination run a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any part of that. I don't care about any solar events or anything. Uh-huh. But you care about it very much. How would you? What was your experience? Well, with I this didn't care event? about it very much, but because right. um, I knew I had to work and. Uh, I was not in the path of totality. That sounds like a horror uh, movie. 
Uh, well, it, to, if you're in the really path of totality, then you actually see the full eclipse of, oh. of the sun. And so north of uh, Schenectady, New York, up near Lake George, Warrensburg, that area um, was in the path. And uh, so we, could, we couldn't really see anything. Uh, we went on the top really? of the one parking garage, and it was wow. cloudy. It was wow. cloudy right where the eclipse was. We turned around; it was clear. How freaking lame, dude! Yeah, it was. It, it was a. It was a disappointment. I mean, we couldn't even use our glasses. Yeah, you bought glasses uh, for this special event. This and is what, uh, this is Dre. Dre sent me a picture of his view of the eclipse in Jersey. I don't know if you. Can, oh. is, I don't know, it might not come out that well, but you can see. Can you see like the uh, the the sun is being obscured. Yeah, and I can see the dark sky around the sun too. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I think yeah, I think they take a picture through the glasses that they buy. Um, uh, let's see. But a colleague of mine, who you know quite well, that's right. There's another picture yeah. he sent me. You know, uh, uh, what did they? Derek. Burn? They burn their eyes out. And uh, he uh, he had a spiritual experience. A spiritual experience today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he you called. He called. Uh, he called me at work. Yeah, and he said it was amazing. He said it was awesome. He watched it from beginning to end. How long is this? How long is what does that mean? How long is that? Uh, that was I think an hour or two hours. He looked at the sun for two hours. Well, he was present for it, and he said it was incredible. Incredible. Yeah, I, and I, and I'm really happy for him because um, he generally was excited. Yeah, that's obvious. He looked at the sun <laughs> for an hour with glass with 3D glasses. I'm, I'm I really and genuinely did he say what awakened? That, with, did he say what awakened within him? What was what? What, what did he? He, he just did he said learned that things the, about himself. What's that? Did he learn things about himself? Did he have like a spiritual? I don't know. I have to talk more about it. Please it was, do. Uh, we have to know. I have five to know. minute and five minute phone call. I have to know all about his awakening from this eclipse. And most of it, and most of it was us bemoaning the fact that we had no part of it because of the clouds. You were moaning. You were moaning on the phone with guys. Be bemoaning. You be moaning with guys. No, I was oh, bemoaning no, the event. I, I don't know what you do. I, I don't. The disappointment. I, you've never moaned on the phone with me, so I, I have nothing to say. I have no comment about that. I'm sure Justin will have a comment about this. All right, all right. How about, how about we were complaining that we? <laughs> what did he have to complain about? He he, he saw it. He had a freaking. No, no, spiritual... we we were we oh, okay. were Rebecca, Tony, and I. Oh, okay. We were... Oh, you guys. Okay, because you guys. Wow, that's lame. Because I thought Schenectady. I mean, you're not that far from Rochester. No. Well, well, we were far from Rochester, but we weren't far from the path. Right. 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 We should have seen a good portion of it, but the clouds were in the way. Oh, dang! Got the glasses for nothing. Thick, thick clouds i mean not just like oh, wow. a little i mean it was like right where the moon was was like clouds How thick freaking clouds name, dude. and then we turned around uh, on top of the parking garage blue sky and when, when is the next one like 2040 uh, something 2080 like that. or something like that yeah. well, hopefully you're around and you can you can go and have a spiritual yeah, awakening yourself. i might be in my 70s or 80 you know right. i hope Hopefully, I'll live right. that long, and we'll, our plan is habitable. So yeah. we'll we'll wheel you out. We'll wheel you out. We'll put the glasses up to your face, yeah. and you can see it. And you can have a good time. I mean, people are saying, speculating, many things may happen because of the eclipse. You know, wacky things. There is a woman that went on a shooting spree, and she said that God told her to do this because of the eclipse. It was an eclipse-induced shooting spree. Uh huh. So I don't know if that's true. And then also, a man shot a guy. Uh, there was a Chipotle employee that was shot over guacamole. So maybe that was another shooting, a uh, shooting eclipse, shooting induced eclipse. I uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't. A shooting in America. We're gonna wow, blame it yeah. on the eclipse. That's what they're saying. But then there's you know then they're talking about the earthquake is maybe because of the eclipse, and we might we might have more earthquakes on this side of on side on this side of America. I, I think people are looking too deep into this. You think so, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, I the East Coast is really overdue for a good shaker, and oh boy, um, was that a good shaker or were we overdue for another one? 
No, I think we're. Yeah, I mean, it could be more, much more. You know, powerful. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some videos of of people's whole <laughs> house like really getting getting cooked from this thing. So I got off. Mm-hmm. I got off easy. It seems like you did too, because. Your parents, you know, I, you didn't say your house was shaking from it. Your parents just kind of. No, my it. father didn't even put down the paper. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't even, it wasn't even that crazy. So I mean, listen, yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe some crazy things did happen or are going to happen because of the eclipse. Uh, it's very possible. Who knows? We don't know. Look, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that it, they things won't happen, but I would just like to share my opinion with the audience to say that I I really don't. I mean, people are looking very deeply into this eclipse because there's a lot of effed up things going on in the world right now. And that every, uh, you know, every mechanical part of our natural world does not necessarily meet, you know, coincide with the, other things that are going on in the world. The planets. I mean, people are saying this is part of the apocalypse. The sun will get dark and then the clouds will shake. And I think that everything is a sign of the apocalypse at this point. I mean, growing up, I've heard, you know, all the world's going to end next year. Or do you see this thing? You know, the bird flu, you know, when the bird flew, Oh, this is the, this is the apocalypse. apocalypse." I don't think it's like the same way. Every, with every type of, um, you know, like one of, one of the ambassadors trips, in the UN, oh, this is this is now this is this is going to be nuclear war now. This is it. This is now now really nuclear war is about to pop up. Same thing with nuclear mm-hmm. war. Every day it's a new cause for nuclear war in the apocalypse. It's not going to happen. I don't think anytime soon. And when it does, it does. I don't think everything is a, a sign of of doom and gloom and for shit right. to go. Shit and, to go and, and and the important thing to uh, acknowledge is that the word apocalypse means unveiling. It will be unveiled. And that perhaps uh, an apocalypse that we might experience might result in something good. I don't, I think that with the same thing with apocalypse and aliens, right? Whatever Mm -hmm. Hollywood shows us and whatever our mind conjures up is not going to be the way it is. Like how when you think of the apocalypse, you think it's going to be like, I mean, I guess because the Bible does say stuff like that, you know, it's going to be floods and this and that. And whenever you think of aliens or whatever, whenever Hollywood portrays aliens like little green or little pale, you know, things, I don't think either one is going to be true. It's going to be something you can never see, never expect. It's going to come out of nowhere and in a way you will never expect. So I think everybody Mm -hmm. should just relax, calm down, chill out. And wait for it to pop off because when it pops off, it ain't going to be anything you expect anyway. So just everybody come down because we got bigger fish to fry. We got bigger things to discuss. Okay. I could care less about the solar eclipse. Okay. I ain't having no spiritual awakenings (laughs) from that bullshit. What I care about is, I don't know if you've ever seen Brittany and Abby. I believe that's their names. They're conjoined twins. You ever seen them? They're like, they were on TLC and they have a big presence. Uh, no. The people, a lot of people know them. They're famous for being conjoined twins. They share mm-hmm. the same dome. They share the same head and they have the same, pretty much the same body. I think the low, I think they might have separate parts of the upper body, but once they get to the lower half, everything is the same. They, they share that, right? So... The big story is one of them just got married. I don't remember if it was Brittany or if it was Abby. I don't know if it was the left or the right ones. One of them got married, okay? And before I get into this, congratulations. This is you know, it's very beautiful. I'm very glad to hear that. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade or anybody's marriage. Uh-huh. But it just got me thinking about how crazy that is, right? Like just for the other Twin, right? Like, so just imagine this, right? Imagine your head is on somebody else's body, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, like I met this guy and I just really, like, yeah, I, can't I know wait. I was there. Like, I can't wait to go on a date. <laughs> and then you gotta, you gotta sit through every single date now with this person and you have to hear them. Sh- like, then they're gonna do sleepovers. Like, you have to hear them share their feelings and their thoughts and you know like and then she's probably talking shit about you right like oh yeah my sister's like she probably thinks you're asleep she's like yeah my sister's a total bitch sometimes you're like oh, a bit i'm awake bitch what are you talking about like why are you trying to air me out right now when she was younger she used to leave her tampons out and it was so disgusting blah 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 like you know you have to imagine you were on a imagine you 
your, whoever your best friend is, right? They're your best friend. You love them. But you have to go on every date they go on with their partner. You have to, like, if, if I had to follow Mo and Jasmine every date or, or anybody, I'd just shoot myself in the head. I would not want to be a part of that. It just sounds horrific. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. then th- that's, that's bad enough. You have, to, you have to follow your sister and their husband for their entire lives. You have to know everything that's going on and just be, be bear witness to this. But then obviously you got to go here. They're going to have to fuck. Mm-hmm. What is that like? Like, I think we already had this discussion on the show. The big, you know, one of the big questions of life that everybody asks, if you have sex with conjoined twins and one of them really doesn't want it, are you raping them? I think we've all, you know, we've all <laughs> pondered this before. <laughs> yeah, like, I forgot about that question. You know, like, so could, a, <laughs> could the left side of the conjoined twin take the right side as well as the boyfriend in the corner and go, listen, I don't want this. They're raping me right now. I don't want any, I don't want any part of this. I mean, you got a case because you share the same vagina, right? Uh huh. So it's like, what if the other conjoined twin goes, I don't want to have sex because like, I don't want to have sex with this man. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's insane to think about. And I don't remember if I, I don't, I don't know if this tweet was real but it was apparently a tweet from one of them, and it was like, oh, like when they when when they have sex, like I just kind of tune it out, I just kind of ignore it. It's like oh, you ignore. How do you ignore that? Like that's like saying, oh yeah, like sometimes I just jerk off and I don't even know it. I just kind of it's just it just you know goes in the back of my mind. You know, like oh yeah, I get my dick sucked sometimes. I don't even. I, I'm not really know. It doesn't really you know it really phase me. I'm not really thinking about it. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I just start getting my dick sucked, and it's just I block it out. You know, I don't really. I'm not really thinking about it. You know, I'm having a harder time thinking about this than contemplating where the end of the universe is. <laughs> You're having, you mean it's, it's because it's more mentally damaging to think about you being a twin. Getting yeah, fucked? It's, it's creating more, more, more uh, agony than, than, than so, the universe. That is like such a, a situation to be in, right? Like you're, you have to be in this person's relationship now and you're, you're getting, you're getting penetrated. You don't want to. It's like the perfect uh, well, situation would be that you guys both marry the same guy that the guy, you know, like it's like a three, it's like a thruple basically not, well, not a thruple because I think a thruple would imply that the girls are also with it. So the only thing you could be like is sister wives, right? But that's not the case in this one. The case is the one is marrying the guy. And that's like something that the law had to like, that needed to be litigated. That needed to be discussed with the law because I know that that's like a big deal with the twins, like they with the conjoined twins. Like they have the same job, but they get paid. Like they they got a job, but they get paid one wage. But then they have to get two separate driver's license, and like so, certain things in their life are separate, and certain things in their life are the same. So that was a big discussion was whether both of them were supposed to be married or one of them is technically married. And I think they settled on only one of them is technically married, right? So it's like, but in the, in the, so is that the law that made that choice? Yeah, I guess so. That's what it sounds like that. I mean, I'm thinking that to accept a marriage proposal that both minds would have to be in agreement. You would think, but I guess maybe that since one of them had, you know, they both have autonomy over their life that, you know, you can't hold back one of them from doing it. I guess if, I mean, the law can't hold one of them back if the other sister agrees to allow it, I guess. Right. I mean, I guess if the other sister put up a fight, like I don't want this, then maybe mm-hmm. you can go like, she could sue about it. I guess like the same way I said, she could probably sue if she's like, I don't want to be having sex and she's having sex with this guy and I don't want to do it. But I guess they figured out some, some agreement, you know? And then imagine this, right? Imagine this. So then the other twin finds a guy. So obviously the next step is if they get married, they all have to live in the same house. Right. Yeah. So then imagine being that guy for multiple times a month. Some other guy is technically banging your wife. That's crazy. This whole situation is insane. It's, it's, it's just something. It's something I think about literally mm-hmm. almost every day. I think about, wow. Imagine <laughs> being, a new, imagine I was a conjoined twin and I was being, I don't want to say that. Imagine I was being conjoined twin and somebody was having sex with me. And I didn't want it. I, you're not going to get me on that drop. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say the P word. I'm not going to say the F word. 
That's just the whole lifestyle is crazy. It's it's way better if they somehow find a guy who loves both of them and uh-huh. they make that work, you know. But again, more power to them. It, it's just it's just something that turns in my mind all the time, like how how that works if it's if they're with separate dudes. What's their names? Abby and Brittany. They've been on like TLC. I've been, I've I've grown up watching them. They got to be like in their in their in their thirties by now. They got to be like. Five to ten years older than me, probably. It's a wild story, but shout well, out the today, to today. The Today Show covered him. Oh yeah, this is all over the place. This is, this is all over the place. I don't know how they're doing it, but more power to you. God bless you, Brittany and Abby. Okay, now let's get to this. We have been anxiously awaiting the new movie, the first. Omen. Okay, this is a prequel to the movie The Omen, which when did The Omen come out? Look up when The Omen officially came out. It was out, the uh, first 1976. One. Wow, you already, oh, you, you had that because you read yeah, the I article, right? It. Okay. 1976, the first Omen came out, and I believe the remake came out in 06 with, uh, with one of my dudes, what's his name? Liv Schreiber? What's the guy's name from um, Ray Donovan? What's his name? Liv Schreiber? Anyway, the guy that plays Ray Donovan, I really I, I enjoy his work all the time. He was in Scream. Any, anything I see him in, he's great. So he did the remake of The Omen in 06, and they have been, there have been subsequent sequels to uh, The Omen in 76. There was The Omen 2, The Omen 3, and I believe they did a fourth one. So now we're going to rewind all the way back to when Damien was born. So the thing I immediately think of is, well, we know how the movie's going to end. Because Damien has to be born. Now, if you don't know what The Omen is, it's a series about a couple who ha- who adopts the, the Antichrist, the child of the devil. Okay. Well, and they it, don't adopt it. Well, in the well, she does, does, she doesn't, doesn't know. the baby die, and the the father takes the baby without his wife's knowledge. Right, right, exactly. I just I think I just yeah. used the word adopt as a placeholder, so I'd have to say all like all that. But yeah, basically, in the beginning of the of the uh, original Omen, their baby dies, the couple's baby dies. The wife never knows about it, and the priest gives them Damien, who's another child, who ends up being the child of the devil and the Antichrist, and then all hell breaks loose from there, literally. So now we're going to go all the way back to when Damien was born. We're going to find out how he was born, where he was born, all this stuff. This takes place in Rome, right? Yes. Yeah, so this takes place in Rome. I forgot what time period, like back in the, uh, probably back in the 70s. And there is a yeah, it was uh, I think seventy two. There you said. go, nineteen seventy two. And there is a nun who's gonna go to this uh, convent or this school, and she wants to become a nun. And when she's there, she gets pulled aside by this dude, and he's like, "Hey, one of the chicks in your convent is wild. You're gonna see a lot of crazy stuff happen around her." And uh, basically, she is 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 uh, pregnant with the child of the devil. So she has to come to grips with this and, you know, they, they go on a wild adventure to find out all about the Antichrist child being born. There's twists, there's turn, there's ups, there's downs, and we're not going to get into any spoilers. I don't want to spoil it because it's, it's a brand new movie and I want you guys to see it. Uh, Pastor, give us your thoughts on the first Omen. We saw it the other day. It sucked. <laughs> now you know you're retarded. Tell us, I tell seem it. to be the only person that feels that. Tell way, us but... why you think it sucked, Dick. I, I, I thought that I thought the acting was bad. Um, uh, that one injury that we saw, I thought was laughably okay, funny. Okay. It was funny, but it was cool though. What was cool about it? It was. It was. I, I mean, it was. I mean, it was. It was a joke. It was cool. You thought, I mean, I don't you know. thought it was lame. I, I don't know. I, I just did. I did. I did not like any of the characters. I think a Damien just took gritty away. Yeah. Yeah. I went. To oh, I thought, door. I thought Damien uh, took you away. No, no, I went to open the window. Oh, okay. Um, well, I read a, I read a review before um, I, I came on the show, and this woman uh, really thought it was great, and it was uh, like had of a lot of artistic value, and um, it was reminiscent of that era 
of of horror films. Right. Um, I don't know. I just it just did not click with me. None of it. Not the way it was filmed. Not the actors and the actresses. I didn't like the way the characters were betrayed. I mean, Father Brennan, who I, I looked up, he he it, it was the the priest I thought it was in the original omen. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just comes on the scene and like starts talking to Margaret, the main character, like he's known her his whole life. He's like, Hey, listen, check this out. I know exactly who you are. I know what you're doing. This is what's going on. She's like, Oh, who the hell are you? What the hell is going on? Yeah. I mean, it was like, no, no lead in nothing. Okay. Okay. Let's just say this. You have knowledge. That the that the Antichrist is being born. You have no time for pleasantries and <laughs> introductions. You gotta okay. get shit done. Yeah, he's just had to get, he's getting right down you the gotta be like, uh, hey, this child's getting ready to be born any freaking day now. Let's handle this. Like she's a nun. She should probably, <sighs> you know, be believing in this type of thing. Yeah. This thing could happen. He just shows up on the scene, is cryptic with her, and then when things start going down, he she pulls out his card. Yeah, because he said, Come okay. see me. Yeah, and she waited till shit really went down. She really went left to go see him, and then things just got crazier and crazier and crazier. So you didn't like the acting, you didn't like the story, you didn't like the cinematography, you didn't yeah. like any of the surprises, the surprise fun, what wacky what scenes. Surprise? You know, well the the two the two things that I'm gonna bring up that that I liked about it. One of those being okay. the, the 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 injury that you. Thought was laughable and, uh, and stupid. I I wanted to like it. It's not like I went in there with an attitude. I don't think you know. You didn't do that. I just I, we were all I mean, excited. The first, the, I I don't care what any of you you say. I mean, the one thing that I am certain of is that first hour dragged on. Come on, dude. It just. Get I mean, it's like here. get. I mean, okay. She's at a convent. Okay, cool. there's nuns. Okay, there's kids. Okay, <laughs> what? You know, I mean, what? What? It yeah. was creepy. There was stuff. Little things. It happening. really wasn't creepy. It was. I was bored out of my mind. I started. I started fidgeting your in mind the, in the seat. Oh come on, dude! You gotta be kidding me. Give me a rating on this out of five. Give me a rating. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll give it a three. What I cannot believe right now is what, what is utterly just blowing my mind is that I had to talk you down on the nun. You were like, yo, this shit was a 4.5. I said, let's pump the brakes. Let's really... <laughs> Let's really consider yeah. what we're talking about here. Uh -huh. I'll have to watch. I'll have to watch the nun again. I mean, I, at least I the liked the characters. The, the characters were way worse. They were so they were like, no, no, that was know. a total like popcorn cheesy movie, and it was good for what it was. I uh -huh. think I gave it like a three point eight. One of the shows I said I accidentally said I gave it a four point five, but if you listen to the original show, I think I gave it like a three point eight at best. The, the only character I liked was Margaret's roommate. Yeah, and then she, oh, I don't even want to say that, but yeah, yeah, she was she was cool, and I was fine with the end with her mermaid. You were fine with the end. Yeah, were you fine with the end? Because I really didn't care for Margaret. What do you think about the end in totality, though? Um, about the entire end. I'm not excited on how it ended. Wow. I thought it would have been more impactful. What else could had they do? The, had had the last had the last scene not existed, the, the final scene. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you're giving it a three out of five. Yeah. I mean, it's, I thought you were gonna give it a two or like a one. Well, I was thinking about it, but uh, you know, I mean, there was something about it that that kept it afloat. Okay. Well, let me say. So sitting there watching it. And I'm thinking, all right, I really like the trailer, but I bet this is going to be some bullshit. I bet this is going to be lame, and I'm not going to like this. So I'm sitting there. She gets to the convent. Creepy things are happening. But it's not like what, what, I, what I liked about it, first of all, was it wasn't a jump scare movie. It wasn't a jump scare popcorn. Everything around the corner is going to like everything's a loud bang and a loud sound. And I did like the nun, too. But I'm glad this wasn't like that where it was just jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. Whether you like the story or not, 
to me, they were telling a story. It wasn't a complicated story. At times, it was convoluted, and you were like, what? Like, why, why would they do that? Because eventually they get into how Damien is created and why Damien is created and how basically Damien cannot be created in a, uh, in a traditional fashion is what I'm going to say. And they, mm-hmm. you find this out like maybe in the, in the latter half of the movie when things probably start picking up and that's when Pastor kind of st- st- stood up in his seat a little bit, sat up straight and started watching it. Because there's a point where you go, oh, okay, like this is not exactly how I thought it would go. And for better or for worse, some people may not like it. I happen to enjoy how like just insane it was. Like it was like kind of dumb, but also funny and also gross. And just like, okay, interesting. Interesting. What uh, I I thought the characters were fine. I I didn't really love them. I didn't dislike them. I think uh, in a lot of horror movies, I end up looking at the characters like they're total douchebags. And I really didn't look at them except for the characters that were supposed to be douchebags. I would say like like the nuns, like the head nuns. Mm. I didn't like them, but I think they were. um, I think they did their job well. And this movie was two hours. I didn't know that going in. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got to the second hour. Or like maybe like when we got to like the last half an hour and I realized how long the movie was, I thought to myself, oh, shit, I like this movie because I didn't even know it's been this long. That whole first half. That that was opposite of my experience. I was just going to say the whole first half that you thought was slow and boring. I liked it for some reason. I I know there wasn't a lot happening. There was um, there was a few things that I liked. I mean, there was a few things that they sprinkled in there that I thought were good because it wasn't like just totally in your face, like boom, bang, mm-hmm. bow, 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 bow. And that could, that could work for a movie and not work for a movie. Sometimes it could be too slow and you're not putting enough in there. But I thought they did just enough. I think they made, they made you like question things, like they made the nuns creepy and they made you kind of like look at things sideways. And then they had these three kind of big impactful things that they brought out that I was like that was cool the one thing I will say because this is in the trailer if you watch the original omen there's a scene where I think it's the nanny she jumps off the roof and they pretty much show that that's gonna happen in a similar fashion in this movie with another character and what I Mm -hmm. liked about that was they subverted your expectations on that it did not it was not like oh seen that already Okay, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to say any more about that. But that's when the movie really... I was into it. I was like, okay, like let's see where this goes. When that happened, that's when that was the sit-up straight in my seat moment. I was like, all right, I think they're being a little smart about this. They, they didn't just do it again. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a callback. And I think they did it better than they could. I think they did it the best way they could have done it. Then you had the scene because... There was um, you find out that they that they give birth to babies in the in that is it a convent, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. they give you find out they give birth to babies in the convent, and there's a very special scene, a birth scene that happens with one of the ladies, and I thought that that was really cool too, and I thought that I thought that was very cool. And then there's the obvious scene that would I don't want to say anything because it's a surprise that happens later on in the movie, not the end, but it happens later on that Pastor thought was so dumb. And literally everybody was howling laughing because it was so funny and it was so cool. It was dumb, but it was like a fun, cool dumb, you know? And it was <laughs> it was nice. It was ridiculous. Again, I said I liked the story <laughs> and I liked the ending of it. Because again, you're thinking you've seen the omen already. You know what's supposed to happen. Damien is going to be born. There's no other way around that Damien is born. What are they gonna do? And I thought That last couple minutes of the movie, I liked it. I think a lot of people like yourself probably won't like it. They're going to be like, oh, come on. Like, now you're really just, now you're really doing revisionist history right now. Now you're just making shit up. And, but I happen to enjoy it because I'm like, at least they did something. They, you know, they threw a wrench in it. They, 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 they took some liberties with it. They added, they didn't take away from anything and they Mm -hmm. necessarily didn't change anything. Which I thought was right. good. It wasn't like you could walk away and go, "Well, now what are they gonna like? How are they gonna tie that to the first movie?" They they just made that up and they 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 took this away or they spun this in a certain way where it doesn't even make sense. It totally makes sense, and you can watch this movie and they they can never make another movie 
and you could be satisfied with it or they can they can continue basically this movie on its own timeline kind of coinciding with the other omen movies if they wanted to Mm -hmm. so i enjoyed the ending i enjoyed I i thought it was a good vibe i thought the cinematography was good i thought it was pretty creepy the one thing I thought was totally do- oh, and and the and the, the monsters were good. Whatever little monsters there were, especially the one where she's in the in the bad room, the monster uh-huh. that came out or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to say too much and spoil it. I thought that was good. The special effects in the movie was was good to me. Um, it one thing I thought was so dumb was when this is a little spoiler, but it's nothing crazy. Is when she's looking for the files, and she finds the files. And this is like a breakthrough moment in the movie. You're like, oh, man, like it's about to go crazy right now. And she's about to get caught with these files. Or she's walking out of the nun's office with these very special, very confidential files that if she's caught with these, she's in deep shit. And they're already on to her. They're like, hey, they basically pull into her office like, hey, listen, we're on to you. And we're going to have you're going to need to take a step back because we're going to fuck you up. Okay. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she just continues anyway, obviously. And she gets these files. Music is, you know, this tension in the air. Now she's, bum, bum. She, she's running away with these files. And you see, her, you see her scanning her fucking brain to figure out how she's going to hide these files when she walks out of this room into a broad daylight, highly populated convent with all these nuns and all these superiors walking around. She decides to grab a dish towel. And <laughs> slap it. Okay, so the files, right, are in her arm like this, like on her chest. She takes the dish towel and puts it under the file. Not on t- She doesn't wrap the files in the dish towel. She just kind of casually, gingerly puts the, fi- puts the uh, dish towel next to the file draped over her arm. The file's completely exposed. And she's walking through the convent, like looking around. And you see the nuns, like they're looking at her, like, "Oh shit, she got the files!" Like, "Oh shit!" And then, like, you know, th- then you see it, like they see her chasing after. She's like, "Oh my god, what am I gonna do?" She's like, "Hey, idiot, why don't you put it on your underarm, wrap it in the dish, t- and n- nobody would have been the wiser. Like, literally, nobody would have cared. She could have walked slowly." You know, like she could have drawn zero attention to herself by walking in a normal pace with the files concealed. Totally. I mean, put them under your fucking dress. Anything. Stick them up your ass. Anything. But leave them. You think it was the files that made them chase? I thought they were after her anyway. Well, they saw the files in her arms. And that's why they started chasing. I mean, because they were doing Mm -hmm. that. um, They were doing like that. They were like, what, what do you call it? One of the nuns were taking their, her vows, and she left to do the thing. And I don't think she did anything to, to draw suspicion but have those files. Uh-huh. She didn't, okay. you know, she really didn't show any, any other, uh, but besides what they pulled her in the room for before, they didn't really have any concrete evidence that she was doing anything against them until then. That's when the music started, and they were looking at her like, hey, what are you doing? Get back. And then she, then she hides the files under the bed. And they act like they don't even see that. They, they, they act like they didn't even, that didn't even happen. Like they, they don't even see that they were there. That was so unbelievably dumb. And, 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 then, and then they show up again. And well, I won't say how they showed up again, but it's like, how is that even possible? <laughs> I mean, you and know, the so- other thing, which I don't think will make a big difference to people that I thought was a huge error in, in the movie or it was an unbelievable moment is, you know, there's unrest in the street. Yeah. 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 The riot. And, um, they've got all, they've got all the kids from the convent in the museum. Right. And they're like, Oh, there's, there's, there, there's an uprising outside. Let's get out of here. And they run right into, right into it. it. I mean, right into it. People are getting hit in the head with bottles. I mean, why she's, they like, stay in the she's cowering in fear. And then all of a sudden she kind of just goes away. It just kind of just ends. You don't really see how they got yeah. out of there. It's just like, oh, it's over now. It's it's done. Blah, blah, blah. That was kind of dumb. I really didn't think about that. Why they just ran into danger. Why did they just stay in the museum? Right. That's a totally, right. yeah, they could have just totally stayed in there. Like, I mean, it just fought them off if they needed to. They probably wouldn't have got attacked. I don't even know. But to me, that was the dumbest part of the movie was the files. I'm sure people are going to find dumber. And, you know, there's things I didn't even notice, like things that you noticed. But 
Other than that, I had a fun time with this movie. I'm going to say it wasn't amazing. It wasn't awe-inspiring. It's something that I would definitely see again. I, 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 could, I could see myself watching it again. And I'm going to say it was a 4.3 out of 5. Nothing really? spectacular, but it's it was up there. I thought it was cool, and it made yeah. me want to watch all the Omen movies or, or see if I can sit through all the Omen movies. How do you, how do you feel about doing something like that? About oh yeah, I, I want to watch them again. We yeah, can maybe good. we can maybe review the series. See what we think. Yeah. I think there's yeah. only I think we only got to knock out the original, the remake, and then like three after that. I think or two after that. Uh, I think there's a fourth one, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So I think it's I think it's just three. I could have swore there was a fourth one I never knew about till I googled it the other day. Okay. Because I remember the third one is like he's in the White House for some reason all of a sudden. And he's like grown. He's like he's like twenty or something like that. Damien's like an adult. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he's like like oh, I think the he's vice the head pres- of a company, isn't he? Uh maybe. I thought like the vice president adopted him or something like that. Yeah, that's what happens at, at the end of the movie, the first one. Like the vice yeah. president adopts him, right? Because his dad is the um prime minister or something like that of like he's a, uh uh i think he's an minister. ambassador ambassador not the prime minister he's the ambassador yeah. and if you're saying this is spoilers i mean this shit's been out since the 70s so i mean you know what are you gonna do we can't we can't hide it all we can't conceal it all we're concealing the ending of that movie like the files right now okay well so, there's only there's one other moment that i really didn't like okay in uh the first omen and it it, it began right after the credits and it ended right when the credits started rolling at the end. What what was that? Oh, the end the end end? No, it is, is the ending of the opening credits. Uh-huh. And the beginning of the ending credits. Well what, what was that? I don't even remember. I didn't like the moment in between that. Oh, the whole thing? Now you know you're <laughs> retarded. I was trying to like really think about like do some mental gymnastics and you'd be like, what are you talking about? I thought you meant like they did like some kind of artistic way to tie them together. <laughs> you don't like the whole movie. What a dick move. Dick being a dick. What are you gonna do? What are you well, gonna do? Well, uh, maybe maybe by the next episode we'll we'll have the um we'll have all the omens watched. We'll see that we haven't done that in a while. I don't think that we've done a a series. I think the last one we did was maybe Justin and I did all the Halloweens. Okay. So this will be fun. I know that I tried to watch all the Children of the Corns, and I gave up on the first half of the second one. So there's like 11, though. I, I was like, I'm not going to sit through 11 of those. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So we'll keep you updated on that. Hopefully we can knock them out. I'm probably going to start tonight. Another nun-themed movie that came out around the same time, I think about a week before, was Immaculate with everybody's favorite actress, Sydney Sweeney. Okay. I ended up watching that this afternoon. I was not excited for this because to me, the trailer looked like a snore fest. Okay, I was like, this looks boring. But I said, you know, it has the nun theme. I was, I think that's cool. It's always creepy. Uh, and people seem to love the trailer. So I'm like, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm bugging out. I don't know. I watch it today. And boy... Was it anything but immaculate to me? I would not use that word to describe this movie. Okay. I turn it on and I fall asleep. I watch up until, you know, she gets to the convent. Oh, something creepy's going on. Oh, there's like, you know, things are happening. And I was like, okay, I'm with this. Fall right asleep. I wake up about 20 minutes or so left of the movie. And it was like I literally missed nothing. Like I knew exactly what was happening. I knew exactly <laughs> I knew exactly what was going to happen in this movie, by the way. Pretty much. Except for like there was one little twist that I didn't expect. But um, I was talking to somebody. I was talking to Cemetery Girl about this movie. And when I said what the twist was, she was like, oh, they do that all the time in those movies. I, I was like, that happens all the time. So I was like, okay. So I wake up. At the last 20 minutes and like literally missed nothing. I think I scrolled back to see like what I missed and I see somebody getting their tongue cut off. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Other than that, this could have been a short film. The ending said everything. She was, pre- I'm, I'm struggling to see if I should actually just spoil the whole movie. I don't want to because I think it's a pretty big movie. But you, you know, with it being immaculate, she's going to be pregnant 
you know that. You know that this nun is going to be pregnant just like the omen. You know that's going to happen. And I, I woke up. She was pregnant. She was going to give birth. And then all this crazy stuff started happening. And I will say this. The last 17 minutes of the movie were pretty good. I did enjoy them. I was awake. I was alert. I did like it. And there was some tension. I was like, okay, you know what? I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't know they were going to do that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There was some killing. There was some, some of this and that. There was some violence going on. I personally enjoyed the little twist at the end that Cemetery Girl said like literally happens all the time. I enjoyed uh-huh. that. But I mean, again, this movie could have been 17 minutes for me. This movie was, I mean, at best a two for me. And I may be totally wrong, but the trailer didn't look that hot. The whole lead up to the big finale wasn't that hot for me. It was just like, whatever. Like, okay, this is happening. Like this kind of creepy thing. The nuns are being weird. You know, oh, she's, she's, she's investigating something she shouldn't investigate. And then she, this little thing happened. And it wasn't even anything spectacular like the nun where like people would start flying around or anything. It wasn't anything like that, which I don't like that stuff all the way anyway, but it just, the, just the movie just didn't do it for me. It wasn't mm-hmm. immaculate. It just didn't do it for me. I would say Sydney Sweeney's performance was good, especially at the end. I thought she was very good. I thought some, some of the other performances were good, but it just did not do it for me. You read about it, right? Um, no, I didn't. You did. You literally told me that. You literally told me you read about it in the Omen when you read the article about the Omen. Some they were talking about Immaculate. Oh, oh, oh! They made a mention of it. They oh. made a mention of it. And what did they say? You said they didn't like it, right? Um, I, I forgot how she put it. Let me. Uh, I think you said she said it was campy. Campy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't. I don't know if I got that vibe because again, I didn't watch the whole freaking thing because I was asleep. Let me tell you what it it knocked me right out. That was good. It gave me a good gave me a good little nap right there. But uh, I'm surprised that somebody didn't like it. I thought everybody was gonna be all over it. And I'm surprised that is the general consensus that the first Omen is good because I thought it would be the opposite. I thought I was gonna be one of the only people that liked it. and Everybody was gonna uh-huh. hate it. You're, you're she s- might have said that uh, she might th- this reviewer might have said that the first Omen was a little campy. Uh, what she said about immaculate. Uh, and just like in the recent Sydney Sweeney starring religious gaslighting knockout immaculate, it is a messy skin crawling business indeed, considering the life created is no other than that of the Antichrist. That's what you said about immaculate? Yeah. What does that even mean? I don't even know what she meant. Yeah. Uh, it, that was pretty ambiguous or convoluted. Do you know what she's talking about? No. Okay, very good. This is what these people get paid to do. <laughs> she gets paid to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, wonderful. This, I, I, I mean, I took it that she was being snarky. Of and course saying she is. The, they're, they're the people Sydney that articles. Sweeney starring religious gaslighting knockout. I don't even know what that means. It's just like a, it's just like a word salad. Yeah. It's just like a word soup. Listen, I suggest you listening to this right now. If you made it to the end of the show and you like these type of movies, which I'm sure you do, Check them both out and let us know what you think about uh, the movies. You might love Immaculate. You might hate the first Omen, vice versa. You might like them both. You might hate them both. We want to know. We want to know what you think about it. Now, let me say, I didn't think I was going to talk about this, but. Well, before you do, uh, can I can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, now, I'm not saying you would do this, <laughs> uh, but. No, I would not. I would not lay there as a conjoined twin. Well, somebody was having sex with my sister and I shared a vagina with them. I would not do that. Well, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you were going to have sex with a dog. What? What breed would you have sex with? I am not answering that question because literally none. <laughs> what kind of question is How did that even cross, cross your mind? Well, uh, I was looking. Uh, I, I happened upon... Um, what I was looking of? for a specific article today, and um, what kind of articles you looking for? With, with all the clickbait, I I fell victim to one of the clickbait. Yeah, which brought me to the Daily Mail with a uh, story headlining 
Moment Texas nurse is arrested for having sex with a Great Dane. I did see that. I did see that. And her husband, they ended up catching her because her husband was whacking off in the grocery store, right? That, and they and they got because he was following underage girls. Yeah, and they got his phone, and that's how they found it. You, oh my god, bro, that is. Just totally, that's the shit that comes across my Twitter. I'm just like, a skip. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it was the guy. Wasn't there like the Harvard scientist that was banging his dog in the woods like five times? Like, they got him banging his dog in the woods mad times. Really? Yeah. Like, people would walk by and they'd be like, oh, this dude's banging his dog. He was like a Harvard professor or something like that. Oh, my God. The answer is what? literally none. There would be no breed that would excite me in any manner to do something to them. I just couldn't get, the, I, I could not get this story out of my mind. And, and I had to discuss it with one of my coworkers to t- let it dissipate. And what did, what, what breed did they choose? They did not choose a breed either. Good answer. Did you um, choose one? But this, this couple, I mean, these, these people are, are oh, twisted. My God. Twisted Both is of not them. Even the word. Twisted is not I, even the word. I mean, what a pair. What, what state is this in? Texas. Oh, they're going to get locked up for sure. If this was in New York, they'd have let him out two days later. They're like, oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Don't do it again. We'll let you adopt it. We'll let you give no you a bail. shot with another. Yeah, no bail. No you know? bail. It'll be fine. Yeah. My buddy's a cop and he's telling me that. Like, he'll arrest somebody for like crazy shit. He'll be, the guy will be waving at them two days later. Like, right, right down there. you like, hey, what's up, man? It's insane. Thank God. Thank God this happened in Texas. They'll, they'll, they'll handle it. They'll make yeah, sure they'll, they, they'll make sure they get it. theirs. Yeah. Um, I forgot to mention this. Speaking of articles, there was a creepy article about the omen, and they said that during the filming, the um, I think it was the priest. Uh, who played? The, who's the guy you mentioned earlier? Father, uh, was it Flanagan? Yeah, he's like a big actor, right? Like he's in, he was in Game of Thrones and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So he he would they were doing some scene him and the uh, the main actress, and they said I guess it was a very intense it was a very intense scene. And um, after the scene, the cr- the priest's cross broke off his neck, broke in half. Right after the mm. scene, what do you think about that? Is that creepy? I guess you think that's uh, you think that's real? Or is this just some? Uh, you think they're just just trying to promote the movie? I think maybe the property's master didn't do a good job on the cross. No, 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 no. This is scary. This is this is what happened in the first omen. Remember, did you ever hear about what happened like in the first omen? Like that somebody's plane got. Sh- Hit by lightning and all this stuff. No, we'll have to get into it when we do the omens. I'll, I'll brush up on mm-hmm. it because I used to know. I think it was like Gregory Peck's plane got hit by lightning when they um on the on, either on the way to the set or when they were coming back home. I mean, like all kind of crazy stuff happened during during some of those possession movies, and it's like it makes you think if it was just happening during one of them, but then it happens during. Like a few of them, like The Exorcist, the set goes on fire and all this stuff, and they're mm-hmm. in the Omen, and when they were playing The Exorcist, and I think it was in Rome, one of the one of the churches got struck by lightning. It makes you think, playing like doing movies about this stuff and playing with this stuff can can draw that energy over. You know what I mean? Yeah, can draw yeah that maybe that's too. true. Now I ended up seeing Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey too, and I'm gonna make this lickety split fast and quick. I was very excited for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. I very much enjoyed the first one. And I'm going to say that I'm going to try again. I'm going to try and watch this movie again. But I, for some reason, was not feeling the second one. Number one, they changed the costumes. And I am probably on my own island with this one. Because, and I'm going to bring something up about the costumes in a second. That I thought was actually a smart idea. But... They changed the costumes to make Pooh and Piglet and Owl and Tigger more realistic. And I personally did not like that choice. I think everybody else will like it. Everybody else will see it as scarier and more realistic. I was not a fan. I was honestly not a fan of Tigger's design. I didn't like Tigger as a character. I think it was supposed to be, you know, everybody was very excited for Tigger. I was not really... A huge fan. I thought he. I thought he was good the way he acted, but I just. I didn't really like the design of it. It. It really just didn't strike home with me. I didn't really like the actors in the movie. That didn't really. That didn't really hit home with me. Just for some reason, the movie fell flat. I fell asleep during it twice. Okay, and it wasn't like. Um, it wasn't like immaculate where I fell asleep, woke up, and then I kind of just like got got my bearings and and finished it. I fell asleep during this shit twice. I tried. 
two times and I was out cold. Okay, like it was even during the killing scenes were like okay. There were there was one that I was like, oh, that's really cool. I liked Owl a lot. Owl was like my favorite character. He's brutal. He's vicious. He was gnarly. I liked that. Um, but other than that, the movie just fell flat, bro. What I was wondering was how they were going to explain the costume changes, if they were even going to address it at all. If they were going to be like, how did they get from looking like a bunch of guys in masks to real mutant creatures? Oh, and I did like how they explained how Winnie the Pooh and his friends became that way. They kind of explained it in the first one, but they really got into the backstory in the second one, like how they came to be mutant animals. And I did enjoy that. I did enjoy the, um, there was a person kind of connected to it and his role in the movie. I, I did like that in, in, to, in his role in the story. I did like that, how they kind of addressed um, how they came to be and, and, the, and the events that led up to that and what happened after that. But how they address the the changes to the character's appearance is so they went into somebody's house for some reason. I forgot whose fucking house this was and what they were even doing there. Like I literally could not care less. But they went into somebody's fucking house and there's a movie on the TV. And the movie they're playing is Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 1. And what they did was so basically when you go to the the second movie they all talking about the events of the first movie and they call it the uh, Hundred Acre Wood Massacre. And they're like, oh, you know, everybody hates you, Christopher Robin, because you were around for the Hundred Acre Wood Massacre and everybody thinks you did it. And you're talking about it was these deranged animals and like that shit, you, you're, you know, you're lying. But they can't like charge him or anything. So he just kind of around and town hates him and everything. So they in the in the canon of this movie, they made a movie about the Hundred Acre Wood Massacre, and that was Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 1. Does that mm. make sense? So they're yeah, showing yeah. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 1, and in the canon of the movie, that was the movie they made about the events. So in reality, they actually looked like they looked in the second one, in the first one, but we're not watching it from the point of view of the actual characters. We're watching it from the point of view of the movie that we don't know exists till the second one. And also, yeah. Christopher Robbins is a totally different character. So I was like, how are they going to address that? And I didn't really like him. I liked Christopher Robin in the first movie. I uh-uh. He didn't do anything for me. He didn't... He, no strings were being pulled on me. Everybody was kind of lame. The characters were just lame. Only one that was really good was Owl. It was a letdown, man. I, I, like I said, I'm going to try and watch it again because maybe I was tripping, but I don't think so. So check out Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. I know they're going to do a Bambi movie and a Peter Pan movie. They just released a trailer for the Bambi movie. All right, so actually what we're going to do right now, since I haven't seen Bambi the Reckoning trailer, we're going to watch it right now, and then we're going to we're going to fast forward to our reaction to it after we watch it. All right, so it was very, basically a teaser trailer. They didn't show much. They just showed Bambi flipping a car. And growling, and I think it looks kind of cool. It kind it's it gives me cocaine bear vibes, and I'm sure it's not gonna be as good as that because cocaine cocaine bear was really good. Did you ever see that? No, I didn't see it. You gotta see cocaine bear. When we're done with the omens, pop that in the pop that in the V8 in, in the VCR. Check that out. <laughs> VCR. Yeah. So I mean, I'm looking forward to this movie. I'm looking forward to the the world that this dude is building. I can't remember the name of the guy or the studio, but he's gonna do. All these properties that have become public domain, like Bambi, Peter Pan, all this stuff, uh, you know, probably Pinocchio, all this, all this uh, Disney and uh, Brothers Grimm stuff. I'm very excited for this. There's not much we could say about the trailer for now. What do you think about it? Oh, I want to see more. Want to see more? That's right. I, I mean, I want to see that. I want to see the Bambi film more than I want to see the Winnie the Pooh. Really? What what is what, what's what's speaking to you about this one? I don't know. I, we've we've discussed this before, and you've rolled your eyes, and that uh, I just don't want to see Winnie the Pooh as a killer. Now you know you're retarded. Lame. <laughs> totally lame. <laughs> Listen, Dick, why don't you share with everybody your social medias, and you have two shows that you do on your YouTube channel. Why don't you tell us all about it? Oh, uh, people can watch or listen to uh, the No Name Yet podcast on uh, on YouTube, Rumble, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and X. 
Excellent. And uh, right now, uh, the other uh, show I've been doing is Iron Sharpens Iron, which is about Bible. And uh, we're going to uh, consider how we could do that different, a little different. So for now, it's No Name Yet Podcast, uh, uh, and uh, we're on Twitter. Why are you going to do it different? Because uh, Eddie's not talking to us right now? Because um, EJ's not talking to us because we apparently um, wore him out on vacation. Wore him out. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was actually uh, trying to put my thinking cap on before we went on vacation because uh, it gets uh, probably – about uh thirty percent of the uh watches and listens as the no name yet podcast. Ah, uh, okay. So you're not happy with the listenership. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, you know what? We'll have to see what, what you conjure up in the future. We're yes. anxiously awaiting. We're anxiously awaiting to see what you're gonna do. You already know that if you're on the YouTube channel and you want to take us around in your pocket, you don't got that YouTube premium, you can go on Spotify, Apple, all that bullshit. And if you're on all that other bullshit and you want to see our beautiful faces, you can go on the Green Nose Best YouTube channel where we do the podcast and a bunch of other things. Let us know what you think about the uh, movies we discussed today. Peace and love. See you next time.